Hey, today we're going to put in some wiring from Korea that will make the light bar in the EV6 safer and look cooler when you brake. Stay tuned. Today we're going to be taking some wiring from Korea that's going to change the behavior of the light bar on the Kia EV6. Now the EV6 has one of the most distinctive taillight bars, but the full light bar only illuminates when you are putting on the parking lights. So when you have your headlights on or your parking lights on, you'll see the full bar illuminate in a more dim fashion. When you turn on the brake lights, at least in North America, it looks like this. So only the taillights on the ends, the uh, part that isn't uh, part of the liftback part of the hatch, will illuminate brightly when you put on your brake lights. Now this wiring from uh, Korea that I got from Shark Racing uh, sent to me is going to uh, change that behavior and make the full light bar turn on when you uh, hit your brake pedal or when you're using regenerative braking. It seems like it's not that uh, difficult to install. They claimed it to be plug and play, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens here. I think the most difficult part of the install is gonna be taking off the trim pieces on the hatch itself. There seem to be only a couple screws though and a couple of clips to come out, so shouldn't be that bad. Let's get into it. All right, so the installation of this, and this being uh, this wiring harness uh, that basically has a pass-through piggyback connector uh, for, I bet, the brake light logic or the brake light plug. And they piggyback off of that a wire that I believe you're going to piggyback onto the tail light strip or the, the middle strip uh, in the middle of the hatch. That's what we're gonna be installing here. And to do that, we have to take off this entire hatch. I have the car, by the way, in my garage right now because it's like 800 million degrees out today. So hopefully I'll try and prevent heat stroke and getting a sunburn uh, while putting this thing in. Um, hey, before we do, let me describe the uh, tools that I uh, grabbed out of my, uh, out of my tool chest here. Um, I have a uh, screwdriver uh, wrench thing, uh, screwdriver drill thing, sorry, uh, and some various drill bits. I believe I'm only gonna need a Phillips head uh, for part of this, but we'll have to see. I think part of this stuff is behind like this handle, so we're gonna have to take off the handle and see what's in there. And I think there's some screws here and here, but we'll check this out as we take this trim pieces off. Um, I also have um, some trim removal pieces, speaking of that. So I have a full trim removal set. This lets you take off plastic pieces in a car by kind of prying them uh, using kind of relatively soft plastic. So hopefully you don't scratch up your interior as you're trying to remove it and uh, install things behind it. Um, in addition to those things, I have some uh, electrical tape here and some felt tape uh, and also wire uh, strippers and cutters and some scissors just in case I have to do some other stuff here. Well, with all that being said, let's uh, get started here. The first thing we got to do is take off the centerpiece here. And um, uh, particular to my car is I have a rear uh, dash cam here. So I'm going to disconnect that and it's on... Uh, on Velcro, uh, like lock, 3M lock things. So I'm gonna just take that off there. Makes it easy to put it on and off in instances like this. And then apparently this thing just kind of pulls off. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get all the, get all the clips and get that part off. And uh, they are correct and this comes off relatively easily. So I'm gonna put this aside because uh, I don't wanna have everything in the area that I'm working. Now that we have this thing off, uh, let's look at what we have here. This uh, cable right here, I believe, is the one that we're gonna be tapping into in order to take the signal from the rear center-mounted brake light at the top and to pull that down to this part, the other part of the hatch, which is where the light that we want to enable is. So uh, what we're gonna be doing uh, first, though, is taking off the trim pieces on the side that we're gonna to need to take off in order to get to the main part. So uh, to take the trim pieces off, uh, there is uh, two screws right here. So I'm going to take a Phillips head screwdriver uh, head here and put it in my trusty screwdriver drill thing. And I'm gonna do 
take out screw direction and let's take out this one first. So here's the first one. I'm going to put uh, my screws, by the way, in a uh, place that I'm going to remember them. And I'm going to remember how many screws I have and where they go. So that hopefully I can figure out how to put this back together at the end of this video. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of an embarrassing video that I can install the thing but not put the thing back together. All right, so now we got to take off these two side trim pieces. Let's show you how to do it on the passenger side one. I believe all you need to do is they're just clips and they come right out, which is absolutely true. You just pull it out. Don't even need the trim uh, removal tool. I'm going to put this aside right here and uh, just get the other one out very quickly, which is coming out just as easily. All right, so I wanted to take the camera off the tripod and show you what, what we're looking at underneath here. So again, this is at the top of the hatch, right? You can see there's the, the back seat, there's the top of the hatch. And I took off that centerpiece first. Underneath there is this black wire, which goes to the center brake light at the top. I think we're gonna be tapping into this first and using the piggyback uh, that they have for that. And that's gonna take the signal that normally goes to the brake light here and it's gonna wire it down through the side here and then go underneath the bottom of the hatch, which is where the light bar that goes um, across the main uh, hatch part is. And that's the tail light that we're gonna be putting the other part of the uh, pigtail on to take the signal from the top to the bottom here. If you look at the sides here, um, there are wires that go uh, from the top to the bottom and looks like this is in part the brake light that um, has lots of signals that are gonna go to, uh, for example, the top center brake light and go to other parts of the car. And this goes down to the bottom where you have that center tail light. So I think it's gonna be a easy way for me to be able to strap on using that felt tape I have, automotive felt tape, uh, to be able to put the other wire that we're gonna to need to just tape it onto this, which is pretty secure and isn't rattly. So that'll be uh, quite an easy way to wire this up without having anything rattle uh, around and have a pretty clean install. All right, we've got one more part to take off, which is this bottom part here. And um, this is the bottom part of the hatch. Here's a handle, and this handle is actually in two parts, and we're gonna be using a trim removal tool to take off uh, this uh, plastic piece here which apparently exposes two more screws that we're gonna to have to take off in order to get this bottom piece off here. So these trim tools, here's like one that we're probably gonna be using. It's uh, kind of angled on one side and uh, straight uh, through on the other side here. We're gonna try using this angle one, which gives you kind of a crowbar effect, but you know, without kind of hopefully scratching too much. So I was able to get the edge of this in right away and let's see if we can start pulling this out oh yeah so i got this started i think you could see this on camera and i'm able to really kind of use leverage and boom it came out so i've never taken this out before so a little bit tight the first time of taking it out but wasn't that tough at all so here it comes out with just with some plastic uh, clips on it and that reveals these last two screws which i believe are inside here i can feel them and they appear to be Phillips head as well. All right, so I don't know if you can see this here. Let's see if I can get in there, but I got a long kind of screwdriver thing in there now, a socket screwdriver, and I'm gonna be taking this out using that. So these screws are a little bit deeper in than the other screws. So let's grab these and get these out in this way manually, the old fashioned way. They appear to be kind of reasonably long annoying screws but i guess that's what yeah i guess that's what you need sometimes in order to have no rattles okay wait a minute what happened to that screw here it is okay so i'm going to put this back with the other screws and it looks like they are actually the exact same as the other screws used uh in the other parts of the trim so that's good we don't have to worry about different uh different types of screws for different parts of the trim all right, let me go and get the other screw here, which is on the other side of the handle. All right, I have that off now. 
And now what we're going to do is I'm going to move the camera over here and I'm just going to pull this edge here of the bottom piece. Oh, wait, sorry. We got two more screws. Huh. All right. In addition to these screws in the handle, there's also one screw here and one screw parallel on the other side for this bottom trim piece, which is held in obviously by four screws total. And so now we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six screws that hold in this whole part of the hatch interior. And now what I'm going to do is start on this side here, so you can see, and I'm just going to pull and it comes out really easily. There you go. Boom. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing, which is that there is a, a hatch switch, which I believe you're supposed to take off in some of the videos I saw before, before doing this, and I did not do that. Oh no, that's not good. I seem to have activated the switch. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can get this off in an easy-ish way. Come on, there you go. All right, so I was able to pop that off. So note to self or to you or to the internet, there's a switch for the automated hatch and you should take that off before taking off this bottom trim piece or else you're going to have that wire dangling there and um, might even break it, which I don't think anyone wants to do. Now that we have all the trim pieces off, let's figure out what the heck to do with this thing to get this in. So there seems to be white wires and these black wires. And um, it looks like the white wires are going in here. So let me try and take this off first. And yep, that looks similar to it, if not exactly the same. Looks like it might actually be a bit different of a connector, which is what I was afraid of. So these white connectors are supposed to be the same as the black one here, but it looks like you gotta shave some parts off in order to get them to, to plug in there. So you have to do some uh, creativity here to get these uh, wires connected. All right, now you'll see what I did to this whole area here is I pulled out the uh, wires from the clip uh, that goes in the male part. And uh, I just basically put the, put the wires directly into the part of the plug, uh, black to black and uh, white to, I think, green on the OEM side. Now the other part, the part that goes to the light and is part of this pass through, what I basically needed to do was shave off the bottom of the connector. And then I basically just was able to shove it in and uh, it stays. I put some uh, felt tape on all of this just to make sure it kind of stays together and uh, doesn't move from the positioning that I had of it. Now on the other side of things, you got to wire it down to this plug right here. And this plug connects into the light bar that's this in the center. So what you're going to do is Take your finger, and this comes out very easily. And I'm going to be taking these two, and the male goes into the female there, like that, plugs in. And then here's the other side, which also appears to plug in very nicely. Okay, now with all this being said, I think we got to test this thing out. Uh, before closing everything up to make sure it's working. So let's check that out. All right, so here is the end result. First, I'm gonna press the brake and turn on my car. And you should see here that the brakes are causing the center part of the light bar to light up. Here it is again, here's the brake light on and brake light off. Now, one thing that's interesting is that the light bar does not work to be brighter like the side brake lights are when the headlights are on. So here are the headlights on. So you see the tail lamps are on, uh, the parking lights are on, which lights up the whole light bar. Now, if I go and press the brake pedal now, you'll see that the center portion of the light bar does not light up brighter. So I think this is a function or a limitation 
of the center part of the light bar that it only lights up in kind of the parking light uh, form and it doesn't go brighter with the brake lights on and uh, the headlights on. So here it is again with the headlights off and the car in auto headlight mode. So on, off. Here are the turn signals on and you'll see it definitely does make it safer, I think, by lighting up the middle light bar when you have either one turn signal on or both turn signals on in the case of a hazard situation like I have right now with the emergency lights on. All right, that about wraps it up. I hope this is helpful in case you are considering uh, the purchase of this harness to make your tail lamps a little bit safer, especially those of you in North America where the tail lamps on the car also serve as turn signals as well as brake lights. In any case, I hope you have fun tinkering around with your car and I'll see you on the next one.